have discovered Tom years ago instead of months ago. Tom, I have to thank you because a little over a year ago, I was not the man that I am now. You know, uh, Bill O'Reilly would never date a spinner because he's in the no spin zone. And I wanted to tell you, thank you very much for opening my eyes to everything you've been saying. How's it cracking, Tom? Oh, someone's ass will be cracking as soon as I get out of here. Yeah, I'm right behind you on that one. Hey, uh, I'm right behind somebody else on that one. You are my father and my savior. You're my idol, man. You know that. I love your show. Love that. I learned a lot of the things that I know from you, and I appreciate that. I want to thank you, first of all, especially about these bitches. You know what I mean? So, And I know I can say that word on the radio. Yes, so. you can. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you one thing. Please do not ever leave. You do a wonderful show. The day you, you leave, radio dies. So I'm going to try to make this quick. Sir Palin. They even happened before that. A lot of people seem to be voting on this, you know, kind of dislike for Obama because of his nationality or his association. His nationality? With. What is his nationality? Because he's black. <laughs> or oh, that nationality. The black nationality. Yeah. McCain, you know, regardless of whether his health is good, just the average viewer watching that, would, I don't see how you could still be confident electing that man as president. Again, you know, they elected Ronald Reagan, and he was pretty damned old, too. Yeah, but he was a good-looking old. <laughs> oh, so that's what that's what it comes down to, being a good-looking <laughs> old guy. Star, you know? If you're a good-looking old guy, it's if Bob Barker ran for president, nobody would bring up his age. Bob Barker would probably make a better president than half the candidates we've had. I, I know Bob Barker, and John McCain is no Bob Barker. Sarah Palin's a complete blithering idiot. I think she's a hypocrite in the way she speaks about her policies. Her policies will not help people in the end. She won't be given enough tax money to build up these organizations that can help people, and yet she will not be donating through her personal funds. That is exactly the hypocrisy that comes from... The, the hip hypocrisy, yes. That comes from the and the rhinocery of it as well is, is really troubling. Yes. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say, man, people are like tea bags. You don't know if they're weak or strong until you put them in hot water. Yes. And uh, I think most and then of some people just like getting tea back. You know how that works. Tom, will you tell will you tell these angel fans out there that that it's okay to join the bandwagon? It's okay. You know, they're they're out of it already. I mean, they hated on the Dodgers so many times. I've never hated on the Angels. I, I've never have. They're a good team. They're you know they have great staff. But you got to give us credit. In and out, awesome getting animal style fries and a cheeseburger. Now, what are animal style fries? All right, they're like fries, but they put like cheese and like a special sauce on it. Ugh, so really, good. Yes. animal style fries. I'm going in for those tonight. My favorite is uh, Carl's Jr. Double Jalapeno with extra jalapenos and mustard. Extra pickles and extra jalapenos with mustard. You can pick it double or single. Go double. Double, huh? Go double all the way. Bang with a nice, big, tall, cold 40 ounce. <laughs> Can't go wrong. My God, all I need then is uh, the, my Glock and I'm ready for the evening. <laughs> From the back of a back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the <laughs> Tom Likas Show. <laughs> you know. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-866. Friday on the Time Lockers Show means wide open telephones where anything goes, anything at all, and anything can happen at 1-800-5-800-TOM. We're now taking more calls. We're taking them faster. That means you have a chance to get in. 1-800-5-800-866. Jake on the Tom Lockers Show. Hello. 
Hey, Tom, I was just going back to uh, the Canadian guy that called about the hockey thing. Yeah. And uh, you were saying along the lines of, well, what kind of business decision is it to buy hockey tickets? Or no, that's not what I, what I said specifically. Is what It's nothing to brag about when your team hasn't won in 41 years and, and the games are all sold out. I mean, I wouldn't brag about that. Right. I, I don't think he was – I think the point he was trying to get across was – or, you know, you're saying... Uh, you for the zero-tolerance policy! Yeah! Oh, boy. If you want to see a complete list of the words you can't say on the air because you're as uneducated as that caller, uh, go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas. All the words are listed. Myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Sean on the Tom Likas Show, Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Okay. Um, I got a question for you, since you're talking about finances and everything. Um, I've been listening for a long time, and you always kind of brought up that uh, that you need to make a certain amount of money a year to survive. And I remember it was sixty grand, maybe when I was 18. So has that price gone up? Well, I mean, it depends on where you live. Sixty grand goes a lot further in Billings, Montana, than it does in Los Angeles. All right, I'm from uh, South County in Orange County. All right. So I currently rent right now. I'm 23. I'm finally at the 60 grand mark. Um, and and so you said 60 grand a year is what you need to make to survive. That's my so, guess. What do you think? Um, huh? I said that is my guess. Do you uh, do you have money to save after sixty thousand dollars? Oh yeah, I, I'm still young, so I, I have plenty of money. Uh, to start saving now, so that's kind of why I'm. That's why I'm calling. You said to make sixty grand a year, so I'm. I'm finally at that stage, and I figured that you, you didn't necessarily have a plan, but you kind of have it broken down to how sixty grand a year will actually uh, pay it off, or like pay things off. Like, can I buy a house, or should I just save money until I can make more than that to buy a house? Or what uh, it's, you can't buy a house. I would tell you if I was a point blank, you can't buy a house in in Southern California making sixty grand. You can't. Not at all. Not not, not at, all. at all. So uh, it, renting is kind of my best option for now. But what what do you do making sixty grand a year? Because you told, you said that that was kind of the minimum to make. So I'm I'm doing perfectly fine now. Since I'm young, I don't have any bills um, except for a truck payment. But I don't really have much, so I don't have to worry about anything. But I want to know, you know, what's the best kind of route to go and and how to save money or like. Well, hey, let's start with this. Do you have a college degree? Uh, no. Uh, everything I have. Is Why good. not? Uh, I've been. I started working right out of high school. Yeah, and but that was a bad idea. Off, but it, it paid it's off to give me the experience. No, no, but but you're not going back to school. You have no plan to go back. No, no, plan. no, no. no. I, I am. That, and that's how. Like, uh, I guess you got an engineering job, and I've been doing a lot of uh, AutoCAD, SolidWorks type drawings, and so I have a lot of experience from that, which is what got me the job. And so I'm going to go now and get certifications and start taking math classes to go to Cal Poly, Pomona, or wherever I can go. How about getting a real college degree? I mean, you're not so stupid that you couldn't get a college degree, are you? No, but I mean... Then why wouldn't you get one? Look at what's happening to the economy right now, son. I mean, trust me when I tell you, you're lucky to have that job. Yeah, definitely. And and you may not be... By the way, you may not be so lucky for much longer. Yeah, I understand that, too. And, And you have no plan B. Well, the the thing is that everyone that's my age that actually graduated went to school and everything, they have tons of bills, they have a huge college loan, they've been living at home or at school, and they have no money, and now no one, no one's even hiring them. So now I'm not a- suggesting you go to an expensive college. I'm not suggesting you go broke going to college. I am suggesting you go to college. Yeah, I, I plan on going to community college for the two years and then transferring over. So I, 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 When I, do you plan to do that? Um, I just got done uh, taking the aptitude test a little while ago. I signed up to take them. I went to go talk to a counselor, and it's just it's hard to get into these classes down here because everything's booked up. Even just to get an appointment is, is a long yeah, way. But are you planning on getting an actual degree, or are you planning on just going to a class? Uh, no, I plan on I plan on taking classes towards getting a degree, and then taking classes towards a degree in what? More stuff. Um, well, if I do anything, it's going to be engineering, either mechanical or electrical. You're so, going to get an engineering degree. Well, that's, I'm not gonna. I don't plan on doing it four years or whatever. I plan on taking night classes and doing it slowly because I'm still young. So, I mean, there's there's no reason that I shouldn't. I know a lot of people that go to school even though they're older and they already have good jobs. So I want to get it on paper, but I, you know, the experience got me in the door. All right. Well, um, that that's my recommendation for you. 
is that you get a real college degree from a real university. Uh, right now, I don't think people can afford to say, well, you know, making 60000 it's really great because it may be the most you ever see. And 60000 today is not worth what 60000 was worth 15 years ago. I'll tell you right now. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Lucas, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I'm calling about uh, California's Prop 8 that goes up for a vote on November 4th, the yes. last presidential election. Yes. The, the uh, polling data just reversed itself, and now it looks like the Californians are actually going to vote this law in. Yes, because a lot of money has been spent uh, by a bunch of uh, conservative Christians uh, on advertising. Uh, that, in fact, you've probably heard some of it in this program if you listen in L.A. Uh, with uh, Gavin Newsom, the mayor of San Francisco. Exactly. Isn't that be voting for discrimination? Well, I'm, in my opinion, gay and lesbians uh, be, uh, should be able to get married, uh, if only because uh, uh, why should uh, the straight people have all the fun? But exactly. seriously, uh, gay and lesbian people have no idea how lucky they are not being able to get married. And frankly, if they had a proposition on the ballot that took away the rights of everybody to get married, I, I'd vote for that. Yeah, me, maybe me too. But wouldn't this, this sound just like um, if we were to be voting for to disallow uh, black people to get married or something? Yeah, it, no doubt about it. It sounds uh, prehistoric. And yeah. I, I am hoping that uh, people will vote against Proposition 8 uh, just so that we don't look like a bunch of Neanderthals in California. Exactly. They even passed it in the uh, court in Connecticut just uh, allowed uh, gay marriage today. So mm -hmm. if a conservative state like that uh, can get it going, I think that we should be able to. I don't disagree with that, and I thank you for the call. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likey Show The Tom Likey Show at 1-800-5800-TOM Wide open telephones Ron, hello Hello You got a lot of static now you need a new phone, then. Joe, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, I, I have this uh, this chick at work. Uh, I need to do some uh, some punishment to her and uh, and the sheets, if you know what I mean. Who is this chick? Uh, she's a coworker. Uh, that's a and, bad. That's uh, a bad idea, right there, Joe. Oh, yeah. I was I was wondering if uh, no if you had any no no. Do you like your job? Yeah, it's all right. What would happen if you lost it? So, uh, well, I'm I'm currently training for another job, which same company. Uh, excuse me. Same company. Uh, what do you mean? Are you training for a job at the company that you're currently working for? No, no, it's 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 my so other job. You, so you go to job at one company, and then you go to training for a job at another company. Yes. So you're planning on leaving the company where this chick works. Right. So you don't care. If they fired you, it would be okay with you. Yeah, it would be okay with me. And you will definitely be leaving, so you won't be seeing her in the office after things don't work out. Right. All right. So what's your question? Um, well, uh, what's the protocol? Or, uh, protocol? Yeah. What do, you mean? You. what do you mean, I what's can... the protocol? Well, I mean, have you ever uh, nailed a chick at work before you uh, switch jobs or whatever? Not in a long time. I don't switch jobs very often. <laughs> or haven't you noticed? Well, uh, let me tell you something about her. She uh, She's three years older than me. She's really hot. Uh, she doesn't have a car. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what angle I should use. Should I just straight up ask her out to a bar or something or what? Ask her out to a bar. Have you ever spent any time with her outside of the office? Um, well, she needed a ride somewhere. I took her uh, to uh, get some uh, some shoes. 
No, you don't do that. That's being her gay friend. That's what her gay friend does. <laughs> if you're going shopping with her, gay. You're gay. Not the wrong of being gay, but it's gay. All right, well, what do I do? <laughs> you never go shopping with a chick. Ever. Unless she's shopping for a vibrator, you do not go shopping with a chick. And may, maybe not. E maybe not even then. Nine. Excuse me. Uh, it's very simple. If you're trying to nail a chick at work, uh, you go to lunch with her. Where the two of you pay for your own lunch. And then if she appears to like you, and that's uh, your call, I can't tell from here. If she appears to like you, uh, tell her that she ought to come grab a drink and you want to watch Monday Night Football with her or something. All right. Sounds very non-threatening. And uh, then, of course, when you get there and you get some alcohol into her, then you can uh, really work the room. All right. Basic stuff. All right. It's basic it. stuff, Joe. I mean, uh, you know, the problem is when you want to st stay at the company or keep your job, then it becomes a problem. Yeah. All right. Good luck, Dan, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? It's going great, Dan. Hey, I just want to thank you, Tom. You know, before I started listening to you, I had no idea what I was doing with girls, nothing like that. And once I started listening to you, it's all about self-respect. It's all about self-respect. And uh, I just want to thank you and everyone out there listening to this guy. Listen to what he's got to say because he knows what he's talking about. And, Tom, i got to ask you a question, and I, I know a lot of guys out there are thinking the same thing. Will you write a book? Will you write a book, yes, Tom? Yes, 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 I will write a book. There is no doubt about it. 1-800-5800-TOM, that is our telephone number. Let me welcome uh, all the uh, poor saps who've been watching the uh, Dodgers playing the Philadelphia Phillies. The uh, Dodgers lost again, 8-5, to five, and now the uh, Phillies are up two games to none in this best-of-seven series. The, the Dodgers will return to town on Sunday. Uh, to play the Phillies in Game 3. But uh, Dodgers lost again. Chad Billingsley looked good in the beginning, and then he gave up five straight hits. And the damage was done. I did see Manny hit a home run today. But uh, I know many of you are probably uh, heading home from bars or heading home from uh, work where you might have been watching the game. Those of you who think the game is on now, guess what? It's not. It was already on, and the Dodgers already lost. Tonight, the Tampa Bay Rays and the uh, Boston Red Sox. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Adam on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, father. Hello, son. What's going on? Hey, uh, Jared, man, you're still there. What's up? What? Um, what? Well, uh, what? No. Oh, I was talking to Jared and Matt from the Kings. He, you had him on, you had him on air. Jared and Matt from um, No, the no, Kings. I was talking to Jared Stoll. And, oh. and Matt Green. I don't know yeah. who you're talking about. Oh, yeah, I was talking to, yeah, I was saying what's up to them. Cause I was, who were you talking to? No, I was talking to you, but I was saying what's up to Jared and Matt, if, if they were still there. And Jared. Yeah. No, no, they're gone. They just came in to talk for a couple of minutes, and they're gone now. All right, no, because I've been... Jarrett, J-A-R-R-E-T, Jarrett. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, I want to talk a little bit about... But if you have a question yeah. for me, I can help you. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit of hockey. Uh, I'm a huge sports fan. I'm a, I've been a, I'm a huge football, baseball, basketball fan. Right. Never did, never did about hockey, but until now, I just bought NHL 09 from Xbox a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks ago. Oh, then you and are it, a big fan. Yeah, and, and I just became a, like an instant fan. And, uh, and, uh, um, I just wanted your opinion, uh, about uh, buying season tickets about this year, cause, um, I, I don't know, I just fell in love with hockey, and, uh, it's, and it's a pretty good sport. I love it now. And, wow. uh, I've, I've, I've had season tickets now for uh, 20 seasons. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, oh, yeah, I, I know that's uh, why you're a you're a huge hockey fan. And, uh, and, uh, and I've been like, doing research on the Kings, and they haven't won the Stanley Cup. And, they and the last time they won uh, like, a championship, a conference championship, was like in the early 90s. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, it's like, I just want your professional opinion, I guess, about this upcoming season. 
The L.A. Kings are building from the ground up. Uh, they will have one of the worst records in hockey this year, I believe. Uh, but that's because they've got a, a lot of very young players, and uh, they are building from within. And when that happens, that usually means you have to suffer through a couple of years, and the Kings fans have been suffering for a while. And then uh, at the end of this season, they have a bunch more draft picks, and uh, I'm imagining by next year, I think they might be competing for a playoff spot. But not this year. But that doesn't mean it won't be interesting to watch because a lot of these guys are going to be stars in the future. And there's no doubt about it. The Kings uh, drafted the uh, number one defenseman in the draft, Drew Doty, and he made the team he'll be playing this season. Oh, no, there's always good news. Like, uh, I think the, the best way to learn about hockey is by actually going to hockey. That's games. right. Well, I mean, I've been going forever. I'm a big fan. Everybody at the game knows me. They all know where I sit. They all know where I am. Uh, who, who do you think is the team to watch this year? Like, who, who do you think is going to go all the way? Well, uh, yeah, these predictions are always wrong because usually the team that won last year doesn't win this year. It's very <laughs> rare that a team uh, wins two years in a row anymore. The Detroit Red Wings uh, uh, obtained Marion Hosa, who was a very good pickup for them. Uh-huh. Good player. Red Wings are going to be a really good team. Great, uh, great. Uh, we don't know about the Anaheim Ducks yet. Uh, don't know how they're going to do. They had a lousy opener last night against San Jose. Lousy. That's a game I watch, by the way. It sounds like you're busy over there, so I'm going to move on at 1-800-5800-TOM. Anthony of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Anthony. How are you, man? I'm doing okay. Uh, man, I want to tell you, man, I go every day to 7-Eleven at least twice a day, and I get myself a 64-ounce double gold. And it's usually a dollar, man. I went today, and it's one thirty nine, bro. Really? Yeah, man. It's now, really... does that come with a free replacement kidney? Uh, well, I have insurance. <laughs> yeah, but you have to get on that donor list. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I'm on that list. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Tom, I want to ask you, man, uh, that email that you said earlier. The uh, did I send you an email? No, no, the email that uh, of that lady... That called in and said, Oh, the one who wrote Barack to Obama me? Go back to Hawaii or something like that. Right. Yeah, uh, are you going to read it again or something, bro? No, I read it once and you heard it already. Oh, okay. No, but I can get the email. That's the thing. You didn't get the email? No, I didn't no, send the, it yeah, to the you. the email that you said, you know, something at aim.com. I gave you her email address. Yeah, exactly. It's on our it's on our website, blowmeuptom.com. If you, if you have an opinion, you'd like to drop her a line, go right ahead. All right, thanks, bro. Take me out, uh, Bill O'Reilly style. Bill O'Reilly style. Here you go, Anthony. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F- it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. F***ing thing sucks. Factor for kids. Bill O'Reilly will tell you how to raise your children to be just like him. Available at Amazon.com. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, well, 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 Zane of the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Zane. Hey, how's it going, Tom, man? Pretty good. Hey, I want to clear up a little thing about Obama being black to all your listeners, man. It seems that, you know, people got a problem with him being black. But they fail to realize that his mother is white, is Caucasian. She labored this guy. She pushed him out. But they still want to talk that mess about Obama being black. When they talk that mess about them being back, black, they point those fingers at the white Caucasian race, too. Yeah, uh, that's certainly true. I mean, let's face it. Uh, there's very few, few people in this country who are pure black uh, because uh, just going back uh, centuries. My God, wasn't it Benjamin Franklin who had sex with his slaves and had children with them? I mean, very few pure black people. If you meet black people from Africa, they are much darker than a black American. Exactly. So it, it just it fathoms me that they uh, do this. Like the email, uh, the email that you got from the female tell, yeah. telling them to take uh, Obama back to uh, Hawaii and pick pineapples. I'm like, you're telling pick pineapples with his with, with his feet. She said. <laughs> oh my God! See that? That's even. That's crazy. It's ludicrous. I know. I know. It is it's totally crazy. By the way, Barack Obama is smarter than anyone who's written to this show or called it in the last 10 years. Exactly. So I, I, 
I don't care what color he is. The guy was number one in his class at Harvard Law School. He's the editor of the Harvard Law Review. I mean, come on. Yeah, it shouldn't be no issue whether he's black or white. They should embrace both sides of the coin, you know? He's black and white. He has something of both. So let's roll with it. That's right. <laughs> exactly. All right, Tom, take me out. You still got the Michael Jackson thing on there? Yes, yes, Zane. Of course, I. It's, we still call it MJ, but uh, we got it right here. Here you go. My greatest inspiration comes from kids. Why can't you share your bed? There was some action going on in my room every night. Who's the criminal? Who's who's Jack the Ripper in the room? Boy, oh boy. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. But I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Are you there? No, I left through. That was my grandmother. Tom. Yes. I have a question for you. Yes. All right. My girlfriend says, you know, we've been together for two years. She says she's had enough of it. It's either I got to stop smoking marijuana or pick her. It's quite a predicament. I love marijuana. So I was kind of, you know, what would you do? There's no predicament. What do you mean? It's Mary Jane? Oh, man. There is no predicament. Predicament. I mean, it's anybody, the... anybody who gives me an ultimatum about anything is out the door. All right. All right. Well, will you take me out the bond with? But, but, but do you have the balls to do that? No, I do. But at the same time, I don't because she's great in bed. So I don't know. I, so you have so little game, you can't find anyone else who's good in bed. Oh, whoa, whoa, yield. I mean, you know, it's a tough world. You know, it's a tough world. You have no game. I don't game, you know. Just no, you don't. Bye-bye. That's that's why you would tolerate that. We'll hate the and player, I know, by the know. way, I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to hate the player. I have to talk to a player first. <laughs> so you're the player. I want to hear. So do I stop smoking or do I keep her around? I already with... answered this question. Here's the question. You heard, didn't you hear the answer? Have you been smoking weed tonight? I've been smoking marijuana for 16 years, Tom. All right. Well, I already, just in case you didn't hear it, I already answered the question. All right. I guess Do you know what saying. the answer was? The answer is smoke and choke, drop her off at the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty more fish in the sea, right, Tom? But, but you have you, boy, bad, truer words were never spoken. <laughs> With it's smoking dope and jumping on Jimmy Reed. What? You ever heard that? Smoking dope and jumping on Jimmy Reed? No. Oh, that's just a little thing we say in California over here. I, I live in California. Really? And I've smoked weed, so I don't know why you think you know something I should know. Well, I mean, I, I know you smoked weed, but what kind of weed, Tom? <laughs> Take I a... the seven Cali killer, Cali Kush. <laughs> I mean, this is no lie. I mean, I don't know what you're smoking. Are you dri Are you smoking and driving? I would never smoke and drive. Yeah, I know you wouldn't, but are you doing it now? I'm not going to lie. I, yes, I am. Of course you are. Of course I am. You know, it's just... This oh, Tom, I was just wondering the main reason... Now, by the, way, do you get, do, by the way, do you keep weed in your car? I never keep weed in my car. Well, you, you, it's in your car right now because you're smoking and driving. Actually, that was a joke. I never smoke and drive because... Uh, so you smoke before you get in the car? Oh, absolutely. And what do you do with the remains? I just leave it right there. You so. leave it right there. So you, so you smoke what? Uh, roaches? You smoke joints? What do you smoke? I prefer blunts. Like, blunts? Uh, if you roll about seven grams in a nice doobie. Yeah. You light it up. Uh huh. If it's at nighttime, you know you go about seventy-five, eighty miles per hour. Off your headlights and close your eyes. Yeah. What freeway is that you usually take, just so I can know where to avoid? What's that? What freeway do you usually take? I want to know which one to avoid. I want to stay from the, what, the which, fifteen, the fifteen. Stay the, off the fifteen. What else? The two fifteen too. I'm always on stay, that. Stay off the two fifteen. You're a signal alert waiting to happen. It's, you know, it's wrong, but, you know, I'm very, I'm the guy going 35, so. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had to drive behind you. I'm the guy going 35 eating the donut. You'll see me. 
Yeah, I'll bet you're eating. A, you're probably eating a box of donuts. I said it. God, I love those Twinkies too. Sometimes I'll even have hostess in the car, smack away at seven o'clock in the morning. Jesus Christ! Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom like is show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas with wide open telephones. At 1 800 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. This is Corey on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello? You busy over there, Corey? Apparently you are. Thanks a lot. Stevie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Yeah, um, I just wanted to hear your opinion on some, like, question that I have. You know, um, I'm, it's, like, it, it's almost like a triangle, I guess you could say, something like that. Like, I, I already have my mind set out, but I just wanted to hear what you thought about it. Well, you spent 18 seconds telling me you want to hear what I think without telling me what it is you want to know. All right, well, I'm getting at this chick, right? And my friend is, too. We both stood, like, getting at her. He was the one that made the initial step to get at her. And I, I guess, like, there's some jealousy. I could feel some tension going between us now because she's talking about getting down and dirty, doing the wild thing, and he's still just on the phone, just texting. Like, he hasn't even gotten past that yet. So I just wanted to hear what you think on that. Well, you know, it's bros before hoes. Uh, uh, you know, did you discuss the possibility that you might nail her? Yeah, yeah, it's right there. But he's, like, saying since he was the first one who... Make the initial step to talking to her. He's like talking about where he should be the first one to nail it, and then me like no, I should be getting the second. But, but the two of you are not deciding that. She's deciding that. Yeah, that's what she's. But she's on on my nuts. You know, she's on, she's on me. She wants. She's telling me she wants to get busy already. But he's over here like telling me like not nah, to let let him the chance. You know, give him the no, chance. No, 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 because she's going to make that decision. You go for it. Yeah. So just just. And just make do. sure he knows what you're going to do. You tell him. You tell him she's chosen you, and that's it. If, if we happen to, like, become uh, enemies after that, screw it. <laughs> I, I want to get that, that booty, so I'm going to just yeah. hit it. And Who needs your time. best friend? Screw it. Screw it, right? It's all about the booty. Yeah, I see. That's what I'm doing, but I just wanted to hear your opinion on it. All right, well. Now you did. Edward is listening to our online stream in Oakland, California, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, man? I'm doing okay, Edward. Hey, hey, I just wanted to call and say, says anything go, thank you, thank you, thank you. I followed your advice uh, last Valentine's Day. So you uh, dumped that bitch in time for Valentine's Day? <laughs> Shoot. I, 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 hey, I, I don't do girlfriends. I just go out with women, just like you do, Tom. Very nice. Very good. You yeah, save we, money on gifts. You save money on dinner. You save money on all that stuff. Don't don't spend over $40. That's but, right. And then you contribute to the human grab bag. You break up with them, and somebody else will do them for a couple of weeks. Then we break up with them and they give them back to you. Man, I went up in the club on Valentine's Day, and they, were happy, they happened to be. Sometimes down here they show movies up in the club. And I just, I, I went in there and I was just looking at the movie because it was uh, from the 70s. And um, and I was just tripping off the movie. And this fine-ass Asian girl, don't have to ask anybody nothing, and she practically begged me to dance with her. I was like, well, okay. Dance with her, got the number. As soon as I finished dancing with her, uh, uh, start talking to this other girl. Now, she was with her friend, and boy, her friend who had a boyfriend, and she got her friend's boyfriend to buy me two drinks. Adios. $10 each. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love that. They are just, you're right. They are heartbroken that day. And it's, it, I'm sorry, you have to take advantage. You, men, you have to get into the mindset of what Tom is talking about. I mean, you can't feel guilty about this. Read uh, Robert Greene's The Art of Seduction. You won't feel guilty for doing nothing. Love that. Edward, I am so proud of you. <laughs> and just another thank you. Just Thank you for teaching men how to be men. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to give them the, the whooping that you give them, man. That's right. I, mean, I, hear, I listen to your show uh, for a couple years, and, I, and some of the men I just hear, 
I mean, even some of my friends. I mean, I had a friend I was in the club with, and he's going around saying, "Oh, girl, you, oh, you look, you look so beautiful, or you all look so nice." I'm like, man. Love that. I am I am so thrilled. Yeah, Valentine's Day, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, best nights to pick off chicks who are sad. And they'll do anything with anyone because they're feeling so down. Uh huh, they are. They are. I mean I'm at the i I'm at the point when I go up in the club, like the last, last time I went up in the club, I mean uh, my friend was talking to this girl and I just looked at her and just looked at her and she had her little iPhone out and I was like Girl, is that, is that phone even turned on? You know what she said to me? She said, since you had the balls to say that, give me your number. <laughs> I told you, the backhanded compliment, make nasty comments to them. That's what works. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking. Can you take me out of old school? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Well, here come the Dodger calls. I knew this wouldn't be, uh, this wouldn't take long. Nate on the Tom Likas show. What up, Tom? Not much, Nate. Were you guys, I know you're doing a radio show, but, uh, would you have the game on? Were you watching it at the all? The Dodger game? Yeah, I was on before I started today, and I was watching it, yeah. How, well, did you see the ending of it then? Well, I, yeah, I saw most of the game, and, uh, yes, I was, uh, not happy. Lidge comes in, walks two guys, and then no more strikes up in the game. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Well, so three balls in the dirt. He no, didn't hit them. No more Garcia Parra. I mean, uh, they're, I don't know what they're paying him, but for the amount of games he plays and for the production they get out of him, hopefully uh, they won't be paying him again next year. Hopefully not, man. Manny came, looked like he was going to turn it all around, and then... Well, Manny yeah. did it. Manny did hit a homer. He did. He Manny did, did hit a homer in the game, but... Um, you know, come on, and the Dodgers, uh, who usually have pretty decent pitching, giving up five runs to the Phillies, not good. Billingsley was horrible today, though. He, well, he started off great. He had three straight strikeouts, followed by five straight singles. Yeah. I don't know. I, I Hopefully they come back home and they can get it done and at least even the series out. But, uh, hey, Tom, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, there I breathe. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Bob on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, uh, I just want to do uh, clarify a couple things. Uh, and your your show, by the way. Uh, Yesterday, I heard you say something about the housing crisis started with the raise in interest rates when I think it was Greenspan raised them. Is that correct? No, that's not what I said. All right. I, I could be confused. Just let me, What did you say? Uh, first of all, uh, we all know, or those of us who read a paper know, that uh, the interest rates of the Federal Reserve are short-term interest rates and mortgages are not based on short-term interest rates. Exactly. So I never said that, number one. And number two... Uh, raising rates was not the problem. The problem was cutting rates. The short-term interest rates that were cut by Alan Greenspan in 2001 after 9-11, eventually the long-term rates followed. And when they did, by early 2002, people started refinancing their mortgages or started buying houses they couldn't afford. And that's the uh, seeds of the problem we have today. Yeah. Do you, do you remember when Clinton uh, uh, bullied the markets or bull bullied uh, the uh, the uh, the banks into lowering the requirements to finance people? Well, they did, put it this way. There are many banks that were not bullied by anybody. Uh, let me give you an example of a bank, Wells Fargo. <laughs> Wells Fargo has almost no subprime mortgages. Right. Uh, so everybody was not bullied into doing that. Well, no, but Clinton bullied the majority of the banks into dropping their their requirements. This is I don't, there's no way. This. There's no way a president can do that. Really, he, can, he, he can't talk. He can talk all he wants, but you can't bully people into doing anything. Oh, okay. So the president has no influence in America. It, it, having influence and being a bully are two different things. Okay, so does the president have influence? The president might have some influence, but it doesn't mean that banks are going to do something that is not good for their own business because the president suggested it. Really? Right. Well, 
you, you should read back uh, back in the nineties when Clinton son. I don't have to read things. back. I w- I was here doing a radio program, and I've been reading all along. Okay, and where where'd you get that? And uh, uh, by the way, I don't get my material from the internet. Uh, I don't get it from uh, right wing blogs. I don't get it from left wing blogs. You know, I I read uh, credible sources. It, who, left wing? Who who said I'm a Republican? I don't know what you are. I said I don't read left wing or right wing blogs. I just I just care about the best person for the job. Where did you hear that Obama was in the top of? his class where'd you read that where's your facts uh that that is everywhere it is not a secret if you google it you will find it immediately it's everywhere it is everywhere top of his class at harvard top of the class at harvard law school no doubt about it 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone redeem i was going to take line eight but uh it disappeared the last second for christ's sake very quickly, Nigel. I've got about 40 seconds left, Nigel, and I'm not kidding. Hey, Tom. Uh, I was wondering what your take is and your opinion. I've seen a lot of high-end, brand-new cars lately. I'm just wondering, what's going on with all these people getting these brand-new cars, and how are they getting them? Well, my guess is that there's a lot of deals to be had on high-end cars, because nobody's buying cars. Okay. My, guess, wanna... my guess is, if you want to buy a high-end car, this is a good time to buy one. Because uh, credit is all locked up. Keep in mind, the people who can afford high-end cars generally have cash. They don't need to get a loan. And there's a lot of people who want to buy cars who can't get a car loan. Rich people don't have that problem. The Tom Likas Show.